In this video, we're gonna talk about talking, the thing I'm doing right now. Speaking is very normal to us, but just doing this took us millions of years. It took us an extremely long time to communicate this easy with one another. Except humans, there are other animals that speak with each other, like dolphins, crows, or elephants. But their talking is not like ours. Like crows make a noise like this, and his kind understand what he's trying to say. But our way of speaking is much more complicated. We could create sentences, tell stories, write stuff. Basically what I'm trying to say is that we went through evolution to get to here. The way our bone is structured and the way our mouth is designed allows us to speak like this. We really don't know how ancient humans spoke and we have no access on their language. That's because you can't fossilize language. But the way our bone is structured does fossilize and we could use them to realize when we actually started speaking. Monkeys can make a lot of different noises, but they can't speak with one another and they can't communicate. When archeologists studied the neck area of ancient humans, they realized that they were not able to speak back then and they could just make noises like monkeys. The bone you are seeing that's highlighted in red underneath the chin is called the hyoid. Archaeologists could use this bone to realize when humans actually started to speak. Even though it's very fragile and it's not connected to any other bone, but that allows us to realize when humans actually started communicating with talking. And it allows us to move our tongues. Like the hyoid looks like this in chimpanzees. And this doesn't allow them to move their trunk freely as us. And because of that, they can't talk, but they can make noises like this. You could say this bone helps us to actually whistle and talk like how we talk. When you examine the skeletons in human history, something that's changing is the hyoid bone. And that allows scientists to realize when humans could actually speak and when to not. Since 400,000 years ago, our hyoid bone has looked like this. But this is not the only thing that allows us to speak like this. They say the distance between the throat to the back of our mouth and our lips to the back of our mouth should be the same length. And just this length alone allows us to speak easily and freely. And this also allows us to make different noises with ease. When scientists examined ancient humans, they realized the length between these two were not equal. And that is why they couldn't create different noises like modern humans. Like they can't say A, E, O. Right now, when a human baby is born, they have this problem. But you can't say it's a problem because when they grow up, it gets longer and they could speak better and easier. Even the Neanderthal fossils show that they could speak like us. The oldest fossil we have found and their bone structure in the neck area was the same as us. It was a 60,000 year old fossil and it was found in Mesopotamia. And this shows us that it has been at least 60,000 years since we could speak like this. Another thing that helped us with speaking is our ears. Our ears evolved in a way where we can detect deep and high sound. When scientists examine old skeletons of ancient humans, they realize that their bones could not hear as well as us and they could only hear high noises. This was a very important part of evolution. If our ears didn't evolve like this, we couldn't understand us as easy as now. And we couldn't hear noises like T and K. Scientists believe that it has been 150,000 years since humans spoke with one another, but not like modern speaking. They spoke like cavemen. And now we are here speaking to you guys. But, but what language did they speak with?
The first proof we found in the history of humans was found in Mesopotamia and it was by the Sumerians. This one has a very good proof as well and the proof is called the Kish Tablet. In Mesopotamia, there was a city called Kish and it belongs to the Sumerians. And in this city, they have found these tablets around and it shows what language this place spoke. The next thing we found also belonged to the Sumerians and it's called the Akkadian, which was found around 4,500 years ago. But how did different languages come along? Why don't we all speak one language? You could say if two brothers go live very different areas, like let's say they go on the other side of the mountain and the other one stays on this side of the mountain. In 50 years, they're going to speak very different languages. The other side of the mountain speaks a different language and this side another language. And this causes different languages to be born. Distance and separation causes different languages to come along. But the oldest language that is still spoken to this day is Sanskrit. And about 5 million people in India still speak this 3500 year old language. It's not only geography that separates language. Time also makes a difference. Like if you speak English and you read Shakespeare's books, you're not gonna understand them very well. It's English, but it's so old and it has changed so much, you couldn't understand it easily. And that is why it has to be translated to simple English and then you can understand it. Most languages go towards getting easier and easier. You could say any language you see, the older version is much harder to speak than the modern one. And then it gets easier and easier. Another example is the Shahnameh in Farsi, where you can't really understand the old version and you have to modernize it. 